Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika. Today I have another tag for you. This tag was created by Rachel Stephanie. I mentioned her in one of my other recent videos. So maybe you already know her, maybe you haven't, but definitely check out her channel. I will make sure to link it below. She is someone who does a lot of project panning. She's currently on a complete no buy. She used up her Jaclyn Hill eyeshadow palette, like that big white one, used up completely. Um, so she is a really interesting YouTuber to definitely watch. And she created the Evaluating Your Eyeshadow Palette Collection tag. You know I love eyeshadow palettes. So I thought that this one was very, very, very perfect for me to do. So let's just get straight to it. There are eight questions. Here comes question number one. Um, I've got the questions on my phone here. So question number one, what was your first eyeshadow palette? And I don't really remember what exactly the first one was. And that's because I didn't used to buy palettes. <laughs> um, so uh, when it comes to like, what was your first eyeshadow palette? It was probably like a trio that I cobbled together with NYX like single shadows. I used to buy a lot of those uh, went back when they came in a square pan with those like, I don't know, like diamond shaped sort of edges to them. So I had a lot of singles at first and eyeshadow palettes definitely weren't a thing when I first really became interested in makeup. It's like Urban Decay Naked One that really sort of put palettes on the map. Um, and I think that's because, you know, up until um, really YouTube and the beauty community on here almost expecting certain things from brands that brands started doing these things more. I remember Lisa Eldridge in a video saying like, no makeup artist I know uses something like an Urban Decay Naked palette because they just don't need it. So this idea of an eyeshadow palette for the consumer market is definitely one that wasn't around yet when I first became interested in eyeshadows and makeup. So I was definitely a singles gal at first, and I also depotted all of them and then put them into Z palettes at some point. Um, but the first eyeshadow palette that I remember buying, I think, is a golden oldie. I still have it. I don't use this anymore. Uh, maybe I should because these shadows are still fine. This is the Urban Decay Deluxe Shadow Box, and this was part of their line for a very long time. It's since been discontinued. It's, it has this like chain mail sort of front, and then this like purple velvet, very much OG Urban Decay packaging. Other than that, it, it is just a carpet packaged uh, palette with a magnetic closure. I still have the little things in there, comes with a mirror, and of course this design as well, I think was on Urban Decay's, uh, all of Urban Decay's palettes. I also used to have the Sustainable palette, which had a wooden front, but that I did discontinue, uh, did declutter because I never reached for it and none of the colors in there really appealed to me because it had a lot of those classic flaky Urban Decay glittery shades, not something I re reached for. This, however, I could still see myself pulling in especially now that I'm more comfortable wearing color, having really played around with a lot of color. You can't really tell by the look I'm wearing today, but trust me, if you follow me for a while, then you will have seen a lot of colorful sh uh, shadow looks that I've been filming with and that I've been doing and that I've been reviewing because I really wanted to get into color. And I think that this is a cute little palette that ties into that. The reason why I got this must have been Fishnet, which is an OG Urban Decay shade. Let me see if I can swatch this for you. This still feels really, really nice. It's a little bit thin, perhaps, but it's always been that way, and it is a duochrome. It's purple to blue, and I, I remember, I think my friend, when we were, when we went to New York together, I believe she bought this as a single back when Urban Decay had very different branding than they do now, uh, but this is a really stunning shade, and it's also one that has quite a bit of a dip, and I kind of keep this palette around for that one shade. This green graffiti shade is also really nice. I also really like Ransom. I do have to say that these two are a bit lost on me. Zero is like a shimmery black, and Peace is just the kind of blue that doesn't really appeal to me. It's got three very nice neutrals. Everything has shimmer in here. It's got Underground, which I also have, a, have as an eyeliner by Urban Decay, and that is something that I really like. 
This is a really nice taupey shade. And then it has Shag and Scratch and Honey, which maybe they should have put this shade in the Naked Honey. But this is a really nice yellow tone gold, if that's what you like. So this is just a really nice gold shade that was in here. Uh, as you can see, these swatch really nicely. It is, of course, super duper old. I think I've had this for a decade. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. So this is definitely the first palette that I remember buying. Question number two, which palette do you use the most? And here we need to stick with Urban Decay for a minute because my most used palette is definitely my Naked 2. I reach for this so, so much. I went back to it again over the winter time last year and I fell completely in love with it again. I think in terms of like almost hitting pan, I'm not sure if you can see this very well on camera, but a couple of these shades here in the middle have really big dips in them. Uh, I don't, I'm not someone who digs into shadow though, so that may, means I use my shadow a l very gradually, which is why this doesn't look any more used. YDK over here has a big dent in it as well. Uh, Chopper is a shade that I used to use a lot. I'm a little less inclined to use it now, but especially like these shades here, like Tease and then Snakebite and Suspect and Verve and Pistol and YDK, like those ones, I really like and I like a little bit of Busted as liner. I I don't think I've ever used Blackout apart from swatching it. And also um, Foxy and Half Baked, I kind of leave out. So this, this is sort of the palette I use uh, to create looks with, um, with Booty Call being just a really pretty shade for uh, like an inner corner highlight. Tease is a great transition shade for me, and then I can use all of those shimmers to create a nice cool toned look. If you don't know that yet about me, I really enjoy cool toned and neutral toned eyeshadows over very warm tones. I think, actually, now that I look at everything that I've selected for this tag, it all falls into that category as well. But yeah, this is definitely my most used. I go back to this all the time. I'm currently really into like the fall palettes that I've been using a lot. So I've been using a lot of my like more spicy, burgundy, like berry shades as well. So that's definitely what I've been using a lot outside of videos and trying things out. Um, but this is one that in the winter time, I love myself a good cool tone look. And that's when I go back to this. If you had to, question number three is if you had to get rid of one right now, which palette would you choose and why? I have currently two palettes in like a special box where I keep products that I know I want to declutter. So this is definitely one palette that would have to go. And that's this one. This is the BH Cosmetics Royal Affair palette. And I have to say that I do really like the quality of this. That's not the reason why this is going to go. Um, so let me put that forward because some people seem to misunderstand me when I first talked about not really liking this palette. I don't like this because the shadows don't have great quality. These have really nice quality. It's just that I have shades like this in many other of my palettes and I feel that the looks I can make with this are just not unique enough. I felt that from the pictures I was seeing of this palette online, it looked a lot more unique. And then when I started using it, I was like, this is just another neutral palette with a pop of chartreuse. No. <laughs> the only shade I would keep from this palette is the Chartreuse, which is called Crown. Um, and on my face, I think actually when I applied it, it looks a little less green and it looks more gold. And so it looks a lot less unique once applied. I'm not sure if you can see that. It's like a gold with a green flip. Um, not really a duochrome, but just like a greenish undertone to it. So it's just not unique enough for me to keep the entire palette, uh, especially because it is laid out in like a warm toned row, a cool toned row, the greens, and then we have a berry row. So I have berries, I have cool tones, I have warm tones. I would keep it for this row alone, but again, a shade like Monarch and Imperial and Duchess, like these three in the middle, I have those. So there's, I just don't need this palette. And that's why it would really, it's really on the chopping block for me. So this is definitely one that when I do a declutter again, 2020, it's coming. Um, in 2020, I am going to be doing a decluttering series again. Um, not at the start of the year, I think, but I think I definitely want to make it like part of my like spring 
spring cleaning or something like that. I think that will be a nice one. And that I will definitely be decluttering my makeup collection again because it like once a year I need to just do that to make to make sure I maintain overview and don't go completely crazy. And this is definitely a palette that's on the chopping block. Question number four, do you have a deep emotional connection with any of your palettes? Which one and why? All right, so I couldn't really think of anything that I have a true like deep emotional connection with because I've used it a lot or anything like that. But I definitely have a couple of palettes that have a story behind them. And I've recorded this story so many times, but it always needs to be cut out of the video for length reasons. So now I'm finally going to be sharing the story of my Vice 3 palette with you. I love Urban Decay eyeshadows. I'm, I'm sure you can tell because I'm already featuring three palettes up by them in this tag alone. It's the brand I have the most eyeshadow palettes by, and I just and really enjoy their formula. It's just that back when they did these Vice palettes, I already owned the Vice 1 and the Vice 2, and when I saw this packaging, I just wasn't really a fan. This is Miami Vice-inspired packaging, and then I sort of started seeing people lo doing looks with this, and then I was like, ooh, but that's a really interesting palette. I think I might like that. By that time, this had sold out everywhere, you guys. It had sold out, and I couldn't get my hands on it anywhere in Europe. Anywhere. So I kind of was like, yep, that, that's a shame. I just, I won't be able to get it anymore. So then I um, just sort of put it out of my mind. I couldn't, I knew I was, wasn't going to be able to find it anywhere. And then... A couple of months after that, in the summertime, I spotted this very randomly on the US Urban Decay website. It was still available. I'm like, wait, what? But they wouldn't ship to anywhere outside of the US. However, you could put in your European credit card details and you could still get it as long as you shipped it to a US address. So I was like, okay. So I asked a friend, can I please send this to you? And he, here's, here's why this palette deserves a bit of story time. So thanks to Erica for accepting the package. She lives in Baltimore. We met up in New York because I was going to the States that summer. We met up to see Kelly Clarkson. She drove across straight lines with this palette to give it to me after the concert. And it was at the beginning of my trip. So I then had to haul it for three weeks in my suitcase for the rest of my trip and I went to like Miami, Seattle, Vancouver and Chicago on that trip. So I was in like planes and I couldn't use it yet because I wanted to wait until I got home and take the pictures and all that. So if there's any palette that I would never be able to declutter just for the amount of effort I put into trying to get this home, <laughs> it would be device three. So uh, let's just talk about the palette for a minute and not just the story behind it. I know it's completely outrageous. I have gone to great lengths getting my hands on products sometimes, um, and this is definitely one of them. Um, it's, it's, it's less effort than having your friend in Germany send you a couple of essence palettes. This one, this one made, a, made a journey. This, this one halfway across the United States with me. It came already from halfway across the States to me to begin with, and then I had to fly it across the Atlantic. So this buddy... Um, yeah, we are great travel buddies, you could say, but I never use it on a trip because I was too afraid to break it. So I kept it safe and secure in my hand luggage the entire trip. <laughs> um, so the palette itself, um, this is the first time where Urban Decay started doing some more, well, you could say color stories in these Vice palettes. The first two don't really have a color story. This doesn't have one unified color story, but you do get sort of quads going down that work really well together. So you could just stick to the quad and then you have a look. However, I like to just bounce around this palette. I really like uh, Dragon in here. That's a really nice green shade. And I also really like Sonic, which is this berry shade here in the middle. Uh, or at, at the bottom, I should say, because it's more in the bottom. So those are the swatches of these two. Again, this is an older palette that you can no longer get, but this is a stunning palette, and I keep it around for these more unique shades that it has. That was something that the Vice palettes were really, really good at. 
I wish they would do things like this again. Urban Decay, can you please do something a little bit more unique than another naked palette? Thank you. Question number five. What was the biggest waste of money? Like, which palette do you feel? I shouldn't have done that. Fizzy Art, Sultry Muse. I heard everybody ranting and raving about Fizzy Art Shadows, but everybody was going on about that matte palette, neutral mattes, I think it is called. And I'm just not a big lover of matte eyeshadow. Like, I like it to build a look up. But I'm not sure why everybody's so taken with mattes. I find all matte eyeshadow looks about to be the most boring thing on the planet. So then I heard Emily Noel raving about this one. Uh, and this is one of those palettes where it's all shimmer. Uh, it's different levels of shimmer, I would say. Um, but everything has a little bit of like a sparkle, shine, satin sort of finish to it. Um, like this one is, for instance, a little bit more satin than something like this or that. And this, this has really, really pretty shades. Don't get me wrong. The quality of this, I quite like. But because this is all shimmer, I also don't reach for it. It's like, I need to have a mix, it seems. The only reason why I keep it around is for this rose gold and this copper. Let me swatch those. Like these feel nice and creamy, super buttery. They are really stunning shadows. It's just that for the price point, because these are, of course, I don't know, 75 euros, so like $80. For the price point and how much I use this, I don't think it's worth it. Um, I just don't get the use out of this that I'd hope to get. These are, like, a lot of these shades are a little bit more cool toned as well. Um, you get a couple of warm tones with these two here, but other than that, everything is either quite neutral or quite cool. So you would expect me to love it. At least I had expected to really love it. The quality is really nice. I mean, those shadows are blinding, almost metallic, but not too metallic. They're still very wearable for every day. They're very creamy, very buttery, very smooth. And yet, I, I just forget I have this because it's so... And I also find that since this has shimmer in everything, if you want to use just this palette, everything starts to look very samey, samey and sort of muddies together. Because when you blend it, a lot of that shine comes through and the shine on these is very sort of like similar in tone. So it just, it's pretty, but I wear this like once or twice a year, maybe less. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even less. I don't think I've used it in a year and a half, I think. I think it's been like, two, maybe even, may even be two years since I used it, which is bad. But it's nice quality. And it's got a lovely rose gold, which is why I keep it around. People have told me, though, that you can pop these out and put them into palettes. So maybe I want to pop out the rose gold shade, but I've also actually debated whether I should just try selling this. Question number six, which palette was the biggest surprise to you, e.g. that you ended up loving more than you thought or not liking as much as you had, had expected? Uh, I've got a palette for each one. So I have a palette that I was decide I was hoping to love that I didn't love as much. And there's a palette that I was very sort of a bit on the fence about, but that I ended up loving a lot. So let's start with the palette that I ended up loving not as much as I had expected. And that's this one. This is the ColourPop Fame palette. This is a cool tone palette. So I was like, yay, cool tones. I'm gonna love this. And like the Vizier palette, this is just a bit boring. It also smells really funny, I know. Like all of a sudden I got this whiff of a very chemical-y smell, so that's not great. The reason why I don't like this very much is it's 16 pans, which is okay. I don't mind 16 pans. It's sort of getting up there, what I feel comfortable with. Like nine to, like sort of like 12 pans is sort of my, my benchmark for where it stops, where I find a palette usable, usually. Uh, so 16 is sort of up there for me. Um, but what I just found is that a lot of shades in this palette look the same once you apply them to the eye. These three shimmers, 
I can't, I can't see a difference in them. These three mats, hardly any difference. Um, you get, uh, oh, and then this, this shimmer, by the way, as well. Like, it's just very, very samey, and the shades in here that I do like are very similar to shades I already own in palettes that I already love, that I know how to use well. It has a couple of darker shades here. This one doesn't pull as dark as it looks. And it seems to, in the pen, it seems to have a bit of a green undertone that is completely lost on my complexion as well. This purple doesn't pull very purple. It, for me, these are not the kind of shades that I like. I need a little bit more from a cool tone palette. And that's one of the, oh, one of the gripes I have about makeup currently, a lot of people will say like, oh, this is such a cool tone palette, and then I'm try it, I try it, and then I'm like, it's not very cool toned. Or then people are raving about this and saying, oh, it's such a nice cool tone palette, and I use it, and I'm like, no, it has no dimension whatsoever. So I'm still hoping, like this, this is what I want for 2020. I want a brand, I don't care which brand, I want a brand to come out with a really good cool toned palette that has dimension, that is not boring, and that's not just a variation on the same type of taupe and beige. Like, can we just, please, cool tones can be so interesting. Why does it have to be so bland? Because cool tones can be really, really cool. Brands, please, please help me. The palette that I was a bit uh, about, but that I ended up loving and that actually made me buy Another product by this brand is Jeffree Star's Blue Blood. This was my very first Jeffree Star purchase. And one of the reasons, and I think that a lot of people can hear me on this one, one of the reasons why I wasn't buying from his brand for a long time was because of all the things he said in the past. And I was just, you know, I'm just not a big Jeffree Star fan. I have to say that the series that he did with Shane last year and this year did sort of have me like give me a little bit more respect for where he's coming from but then sometimes I still think like oh no no it's like like there's something about him it to me that just doesn't feel very genuine sometimes and I'm not saying it's all the time it's just that that also put me off not really wanting to buy his products but then I saw the, the pictures of this, and I'm not sure if you knew this about me, but this year I really wanted to try green, blue, and purple eyeshadows. So when a brand then comes out with an all blue palette, I, I just couldn't pass up on this. And I ended up really, really loving the quality of these shadows. I know not everybody loves Jeffree Star quality. It can be a bit powdery, a lot of kick up. Uh, some of it, it doesn't really need to build, but it's just sometimes so pigmented that, you know, you get staining and things like that. So that's something that you do need to bear in mind. Um, one of my favorite shades in this palette, palette here is Ocean Ice, which is this super intense blue glitter that stains the heck out of your eyes, <laughs> I do have to say. Um, but it's so like so pretty and a lot of that chunky glitter just translates into a stunning metallic blue shade and this on the lower lash line is just exactly that pop of blue look at that i'm trying to wipe off my finger <laughs> uh, not successful i'm just gonna have to deal with some makeup remover in the after i film this video and and that's just something that i i think is really unique about this palette and because i love this one so much i ended up buying the jawbreaker I didn't buy anything from this conspiracy Shane Dawson collection because none of the colors really appealed to me. Like I just looked at the pictures and the swatches and I was like, I'm sorry, you created a, I don't know, a six part hour series and the product that comes out of it is just not up my street. So that's why I decided to pass up on anything from the conspiracy collection that they did together. But this I love. And I think it's really, really great quality. And it's just a really cohesive blue palette that has a couple of like peachy neutrals that pair really well. So in terms of color story, I ended up loving this so, so much. That doesn't take away any of the reservations that I do have about him as a person. Of course, I don't know him. 
I always sometimes think that we only know half the story sometimes as well. So I ended up caving because of the color story in here and the quality in here. And it's definitely made me a lot more curious after the rest of his line. Question number seven, do you have a palette you never reach for? Which one and why? I could have featured every single sleek palette I have for this question. So I have just one here. This is the Enchanted Forest. This is a stunning, this is a kind of neutral, like cool tone neutral palette that I feel is just really nice. Oh, let me hold it up this way, better, better lighting. So this is a stunning neutral cool tone palette. It has purples, it's got a couple of blues, it has some browns, it has a taupe. This is really, really cool and I really like it. It's just that my sleek palettes don't get a lot of use because I just kind of forget I have them. And Sleek, of course, is a brand that not a lot of people talk about anymore as well. But the palettes I have, I still like because they very often have very unique color stories. And that's why I keep it around. So, for instance, with this Royal Affair, I love the quality, but I don't like the color story in here. So I don't see myself ever using this again. And ooh, that little thing comes out every time. So even though I never reach for these, and even though they don't get a lot of use, I still feel that the colors in here are unique enough to my collection still. After all these years, these are still unique enough for me to at least keep them around so that if I'm looking for a very particular shade, I have them in a quality that I like, which is why I, I don't want to declutter these. I'm not sure if I'm making a lot of sense, but that's just the reasoning behind it for me with my sleek palette. So this is definitely one that I feel I need to use more often because the Enchanted Forest is just stunning. It's completely up my street. I just, it just kind of sits in a drawer and I forget I have it. That's really bad, I know. And then last but not least, question number eight is, do you have any palettes where you love all the shades? And I gave this a bit of a thought and I actually have three palettes that I would like to share with you. The first palette that instantly sprang to mind when I read this question was this, the, the, the Lorac Pro 3. And the Lorac Pro 3 is a palette that I've been raving about. Some people don't get it, but this color story is great if you have fair skin and a neutral undertone. Um, there are, like, with a lot of the neutral palettes that I have and that have been raved about in the past, I cannot use every single shade I feel. Like I mentioned in the Naked 2, there are three shades I just never reach for. Never. Like some of those have never been touched. Um, maybe to do a look every once in a while I will dip into them, but they're just not, they either don't suit my complexion or they don't really go with any of the other shades that are in the palette, according to me. But with this, this was the first time that I bought a neutral palette that I was like, ooh, I like every single shade. So that is quite rare for me to have that sort of feeling with a palette. Um, the only shade, Jet Black, that, mm, but this works really well as a liner, I feel, even though this is also in other Lorac palettes where I don't like it. But here I feel that it's it nicely complements everything else that's in here. Truffle is a shade that is dark, but that still works on my complexion. And everything else that's in here in terms of mattes and shimmers just works. It works for me. This is not your palette if you have anything darker than a light skin tone, though. This is not for people with medium skin. This is not for people with dark skin. This is a fair gal's dream. Um, it has the shimmers that will really suit your complexion. Some of it is a bit more cool toned. Some of it is a bit more warm toned, I would say. But overall, this is very neutral as in right smack in the middle of warm and cool. And I think that that's also one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't know what to do with this because I just think that not a lot of people are truly neutral. Um, I am, so that's nice. Uh, so I always struggle to find things that work for me because if it's too cool, I can look a little bit bland. And if it's too warm, I can look a little bit sickly. But with this right smack in the middle, I showed you the Urban Decay where it had a couple of dents. This shade here, it's called Rose Bronze, I think. Yeah, Rose Bronze. I use this almost every single time I use this palette. It has a gigantic dip in it, as does Light Pewter over here. Dark Mocha has seen lots of use, as has Medallion. 
Lorac shadows are very soft though and you don't get a lot of product in the pan. So this is usually a palette that you can pan quite easily. This is the kind of product where if I were to hit pan on those four shades, I would definitely try and see if I can repurchase this and have a backup ready because I would be a bit nervous to not have this in my life. Another, the second palette I wanted to feature for this question that I know I can use every single shade in and that I love is the Tartlet in Bloom palette. This is another one of my favorite neutral palettes. This has seen quite a bit of use as well. Nowhere near enough to say, okay, I'm going to be hitting pen on this anytime soon. The uh, Firecracker has, like the name Tarte has definitely rubbed off, as has Rocker over here. And I also really like Funny Girl, like Shimmers, I tend to use a little bit more of usually. Also, these two mattes here have seen quite a lot of use. And I love Rebel in this as well. Rebel is... Like, I just bounce around whenever I use this palette. You can use it as quads if you'd want to, but I personally don't do this. But that's why I still do like every single shade in here, because you have a cool tone brown, like a neutral tone brown, and a warm tone brown. So if you want to deepen anything up here, then you can do that. This is the perfect, like, day to night sort of palette. Every single shade in this palette just makes sense to me. It has a place in here. I think this is one of the best palettes on the market still. And then last but not least, I know this is a little bit cheating, but I wanted to feature my MAC palette because I handpicked every single shade that's in here uh, over the years. This palette definitely went through stages and different renditions and all that for some time. Um, I definitely had a couple of pinks in here that I ended up decluttering. The newest three are up here, steamy, Plumage and Sumptuous Olive I just bought. Um, I remember that this shade, the last time I tried using this, my vanilla is sort of dried up and not really swatching very well anymore. Um, but I think that when I use up my The Body Shop eyeshadow that I set my base with, I can still use it for that because then I use a very fluffy brush that I just sort of swirl around in it. And then I will repurchase this at some point in time. But this is just my curated sort of does everything that I wanted to do kind of palette. Um, I've got all of my light shades at, at the top. I've got my like mattes right here in the middle with like all of the crease shades that just work on me. And then I've got, uh, is this Embark? Yeah, that's Embark. Uh, so I have something deeper to deepen things up or use as a liner. And I also have Beauty Marked, which is a ni another matte that I can do that with. I didn't have something that was like deep enough to work with these greens, which is why I ended up using uh, buying Plumage. I've got some corals in here that works really well, like peachy corals work really well on me in the uh, in the springtime, I feel. And then I have all of the taupes and like neutrals that I personally really like. I have some coppers, I have some berries. This is, this is just the palette that does everything that I needed to do. If I, if I had to keep just one palette, it would probably be this one. That's a bold statement. So those were all of the palettes I wanted to talk about in this video. That's the end of the tag. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make new videos three times a week, so I will be back with another video soon. Hope to see my next video. Bye! I put